Okay, okay. Huh. okay. Well, let's just chat a little bit uh, generally. Actually, let's do a little. No, let's chat. Okay, then we'll do a little warm up activity. How is everybody? How's your learning going? How was the two weeks? We got any questions or anything? In English? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, sure. Any la we'll take any language. I'm exhausted. Exhausted? Yeah, hang in there. Yeah, it gets tough to try and keep doing everything, right? Pile this on top of everything else. Ah, for the first time. Usually you'd say um, shu hua. Shu hua would be usually for the first time. And then there's some other ways. It gets a little complicated. I'd probably have to do a little bit of digging around for like uh, someone I've never seen before or something like that. There's ways to say that. But it gets really pretty funky. It gets into these negative habitual perfectives. But for the first time, it would be like shu hua. Shu gunach is a little bit different. So, like, shu gunach gucha, like if this was the first cup ever made, shu gunach would work for that. Shu hua is usually like at first or something like that. So, it, it kind of depends on the context. Um, I'd probably want to see maybe the sample sentence, the sentence you're trying to get or the way you're trying to use it. Any other questions? Okay. Well, I thought we'd do a little activity. I was doing this with my with my daughter yesterday. Uh, let's see. What's that? Working on a lot of final projects. Yeah, she get the heeny. Shkun ye jinni ye dati jichwani. So, shkun ye jinni would usually be like some kind of school project, uh, school work is really what it translates to. And then a project would be an interesting sort of thing. But I have to probably think on that and ask around a little bit and see. Usually you could say just like ye jinni. And then you say like something dot ye. So that's like I was working on something. So it could be whatever. So this could be car dot ye jehwane. Shkun ye jenei. So that's the possessed form of ye jenei is work. So like ye jenei. So that's work. So it becomes ach ye jenei. Uh, if it gets possessed, and then so like dot ye jechwani, so like I was working on, and then um, yeah, so the, and then that's. Where would you change the pronoun? For. For the for like. Oh, for like you were working or something. Yeah. So the the subject is right here. Okay. So then, if you wanted to say. Um, oops, it's not right. So then you can have you were working, um, yeah, he or she was working. Um, I don't know if you guys can see this online. Y'all were working. Uh, we were working. Uh, 
And then someone was working. So what we see is that the subject is right there, so that changes, but that changes the shape a little bit of things that are around it. Okay, okay, let's see. Oh, I would say, um, no, so I would use a future form. Um, and then you get which we can sort of goof around with on here. So when we look up these verbs, uh, if we know what we're trying to say, we go down to shot, and then this, this is the one we usually have to like hold or to lift up. It's going to be the L classifier. And we see that it's qa. And because it's qa, one thing that we're going to figure out is that the ye is going to be there. So when we have ye a gukhsha shot, we'd go ye kukwasha shot. And that's how you're going to move it into the, the first person. And we'll look at some of those, like how to. Oh, good grief. Thank you. Hold on. Let me. Now let me turn a couple of things back on here. Yeah, so when we look it up, so a lot of times it's just going to show us the third person, uh, so that's going to be K underline K W A, and then the rest will be the same. So what's going to change is this short part. So whenever we go to the future, uh, the things that will change will be up to the classifier. But it's going to be really predictable. But the question is, what's going to come before it? And the yay pops up because if we go back to the top, we see that it's qa conjugation. Qa will have yay in the future. The ga conjugation will have k in the future. So if you're hearing people say verbs and it's got K or Y in the future form. That's why. It's, that's the only reason why. It's right there. But it's just like another little thing to sort of log into the brain. Uh, let's see. So does it make a good project for the nephew for the future? Is that what I heard? The, the sentence? Oh, the sentence was, and then I'll hold my niece or nephew for the first time. Like maybe they're going to be born or something. And let's see. I had a... Is anybody having a hard time hearing? Can you guys hear okay? Does it sound crackly or bad or anything out there? Okay, it sounds okay, it sounds good. Yeah, you might try to log off and log back on. Okay, any other questions? It was an awesome two weeks. Uh, just talking to Maori people and what they're doing with their language and then talking with um, Hawaiians who were on this Hokalea canoe journey around the world that took 37 months. And then just thinking about uh, listening to their experiences and what kinds of things we might do as we continue to build a language movement. And so the question I always have is, if in 30 years I want 5,000 speakers of Clinkit, I want to be part of a movement that helps to see that happen. So that's kind of one of my goals. But for now, I was doing this with my with my daughter yesterday. So uh, I'm going to draw something, and you just say what the name of it is. So we did like a little kind of back and forth Pictionary game, and then we. We did spelling too, but it was pretty fun. Okay, I'm not 
the best Pictionary artists. Hopefully you guys can all see this on the, this just be something for fun. And then we'll do something that's maybe a little harder. Uh, okay, here we go. Yeah, away. Yeah, away. <laughs> Hopefully you guys, I'll try a black marker. Maybe you guys will. And those of you online, you might have to shout it because I can't read it at the same time. Uh, let's see. Having a hard time figuring out a way to compare size. One item is bigger than the other. Uh, so, okay. So we had a question. Um, so there's... So these are two ways to say how, how large something is. And so maybe I'll use this screen share because I write pretty messy. And I draw pretty messy too. So the question was uh, how to talk about something being bigger, something being smaller. Uh, So the first, hold on. So the first thing is to say how how large is something, right? And this is how you say like, uh, basically what these are saying is it's yay big, right? This it's this size. You're talking about a specific size. You're not saying it's large or small, you're just saying it's a comparative type of way to say it. And there's two different ways to say it. Why would there be two different ways to say it? Large and larger? Not quite. It has to do with the types of things that large we're talking about. Large versus large thing? Or round yes. thing or large thing? Well, yes, you were right. So large, so ye kuge would be the thing is this big. And then yekushage would be this living thing is this big. So the second one we'd use for animals, people, whatever. So the first one would use for kind of objects. And so, so this is part one. And then part two, uh, so this is, both of these mean to be uh, this big or whatever. Right, like it's this big, yekuke, or this many. It could be this many. Uh, the second one, uh, so this is where it gets kind of interesting because you could say, uh, I could, for example, I saw a speaker name their clan houses, and then they'd say yekuke oe hanakahitki. That's how many houses we have. So it could also be how many. So it gets a little tricky. The second one cannot be how many people. It has to be how big, right, or things because we count living things different than we count other things, uh, just in terms of how we use the verbs. So then, part two, uh, these two. So the first one is ayanach, where I say that? Ayanach, ayanach, ayanach. Akin. 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 So you could say Ayanach ye kuge. Or you could not. Ayanach ye kuge. Ayanach ye kuge. Ayanach ye kuge. Akin ye kuge. So that would be, you know, uh, and then you could say this is, so this is also the ah uh part. Do we recognize what that thing is? It's a it's, right? It's. So you could say, ah ya nach that person's bigger than me. 
Iqin yeklege, that person's smaller than you. Right? So that, that's how that whole thing works. So this one would come first, and then this one would come second. And that yanachin kin could work for a bunch of different things. It just means more than, less than. Right? So that's how it would do greater than, less than, and clink it. Um, and so you might say, uh, this, this, I've heard this in terms of moon phases and stuff. So, someone might say, uh, maybe it's a half moon tonight. I think it's smaller than that. I think it's larger than that. And so these are some things more than, bigger than, less than. Those, are, those can work with a, of quite a few different things. How do you compare objects? Oh, so if if you wanted to say like this table is bigger than this person, you would say do yanach ye kuge, but it get, that gets a little funky. And then to say a person's bigger than a table, we nadauk yanach ye kuge. But I don't, I'd have to check that one because it's getting. I'm pretty sure whatever the verb you're using. You're talking about how big that particular thing is. And so if it's a non-living thing, it should be kuge. If it's a living thing, it should be yekshuge. But you could say, um, a walrus is bigger than a person. So would be an animal that's larger than a person. would be more than people. Uh, oh, like a moose to a car. Yeah, so you could say car, a uh, yet car, car away. Because, you know, there's no clinket word for really car. I guess you could say at or something. Car, a what? We disco yanach yekleke. A car, a moose is larger than it. So that's, that's how I would say it. But I'd probably, I'd, I'd probably want to check that one with the speaker. But that's how you do that, and so. So if you flipped it around, if you were saying the moose is larger than the car, which is what? Then it'd be kuge. Oh, so no, the first one I said, I said wait a car car awe, we disk a yanach yekshake, which is the moose is bigger than the car. We disk poa. We car a yanach yekuge. So the first you would say. Hmm. Or I guess I should say it the other way around. We disk car yanach yekshake. A moose is bigger than a car. We car disk yanach yekuge. Okay. Yeah. So you say, okay, so depending on the subject, you um, change the verb. Yeah, whichever one you're talking about being. And so whenever you say this one's bigger or smaller, that you that's what you're talking about, the living or the non-living okay. thing. And that's when you decide which one to use. And that's not going to be a deal breaker. Like people are going to be like, what? But even but if, to say something like that is probably pretty strange and clink it. But I, I think we should. We should be getting to things like that. Because that's, and that's where you could say something like that too. Like say we're doing some kind of guessing game and I had like a bird in mind. Um, and then you sort of said, a walk. Because you figured out that I was talking about a bird. We're playing some game where I was dropping hints. And I might say, It's smaller. So then you're like, Oh, It's like, You know, it's bigger than that. And you'd say, And I'd say, Of course it was right? Mm -hmm. Can I ask, is this a way, Oh, like to say all the time to something. Oh, to say like wake up, wait. You would usually use it uh, if you're talking about where it's located, but I think it naturally just it sounds pretty good a lot. But I know we tend to use it and clink it as if it's saying the, because you don't need to say it, because you could say. Um, but usually when you're when you're saying what you're saying that, like you know that uh, walk we've been talking about. 
And so the, the, the ways that it starts to get tricky is if you're saying yeah for this or weh for that. Um, I think it's pretty safe. If, if you feel like you're using it a little bit too much, um, we could just sort of pay attention. But, it, but you can't just use your law at home? Yeah, you can. I, I think you can. I think people do. Um, and then the other, but then the other thing with Clinkit too is like in real, in a lot of classical Clinkit, when you watch when they're talking, once they've established who we're talking about, like we're talking about this uh, hummingbird or whatever, you know, once I said hummingbird, I wouldn't have to really say hummingbird again. You just move into third person pronouns from that. Yuck, hey. Okay. What'd you guys do? What'd you guys what'd you guys work on? Well that's gone. The first week we went and we 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 looked at um from um it's uh to Navis, uh, is that right? The oh, uh, okay. speaker from Sitka, the second speaker. Oh and yeah. The speaker, and we went through that and that was like a or something like that. Oh, the book? Yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah, that's from like 1890 something or 19. It's amazing. So that was pretty cool. Nice. And we went through and did the possessive worksheet together. And then we did, on our last class, we did some more work just practicing um, making things possessive. So you guys could own everything now, right? <laughs> it's all mine now. I could say it. Wouldn't that be great if Clinkett worked like that? Like, Akari, get away, right? It's like, <laughs> We need some kind of like supreme reward system. Excellent. Well, good. So I, I think now it'll be good. This should be a good thing to transition to. Uh, so this is based on a presentation I put together quite a while back. Oops, let me make this smaller. And so just thinking about, oh, let me turn this off too using place names to, there's a couple of concepts I think place names and body parts really help to learn kind of how they work. And these, this is getting into, so we, we did some stuff with nouns, we did now possessing nouns. Um, there's another kind of fun thing you'll see with place names and other things. When you make a compound word and clink it and you smash things together, this is what happens. All the vowels go short and low except for the last one. That's kind of how it works, right? So if you had a whole bunch of things, like for example, uh, here's an example of what I'm talking about. Uh, so this is a fun word I was talking to my son about. So I would say do. And then when you add these things together, who's, and then sih. How many of those things can we identify? What they translate to? Foot. Foot. Finger. Finger. No. Tzik. Tzik. So tzik is related. There's a related word, tzik. They're, they're kind of similar. What's ich? Garbage. Garbage. So ich is like kind of dust or Dangerous. lint or just some kind of unidentified thing. This this is in the Raven story quite a bit where he turns into that spruce needle. There's certain versions where they keep bringing her water and she's like, There's some piece of dirt or something floating on there. And so this one is chak. So chak is between two things. So let me, let me make sure I'm going to spell this. Between your toes. <laughs> yes, these are toe jams. These are totally toe jams. And so, because um, I was digging them, yeah, we, my son had these kind of woolly socks on. He was mad. And so I started picking at his toe jams, and he got to a better mood. <laughs> So when these things when these things get put together, um, 
I'll make sure I'm spelling it right. So what's going to happen is everything's going to go short. So you're going to do plus. I think that's how it goes. Let me let me double check the spelling with my toe jams here. I need to spell the toe jam correctly. And so but but what what you're going to see is most nouns are just going to they're just going to compress when they go to a compound. So the, there's a few that don't uh, because they you know, some of them they just they'll just hold on to themselves, and chak is one that probably would because it's not an actual noun. It's sort of saying between these two things. So that's another thing with nouns. As you see long nouns and you start to recognize them as compound nouns, a bunch of things put together, you'll see that they do things like this. No. Okay. Uh, yeah, and then it gets this. It gets this relational thing too. So the relational suffix is the exact same thing. It's the possessive suffix, but it'll pop up on a bunch of things too. Like for example, you'll have chak and heen, and you get chakini. That's when you know it's a place name saying the Eagle River, not saying Eagles River, because that would be chakini. They would stay two different words. When they smash together as one word, which they do in place names, then you're getting basically a compound. And you'll see in clan and names of people and stuff, these types of things, you'll see these things happening too. So let's look at how some of this stuff uh, can get us to understand a few more things about Quinkit. And so one of the things that I try to do is say, okay, these are nouns, and we've learned a whole bunch of them. We learn how to do relational noun, or like to possess them. We learn how to do small, plural, uh, many, right? And so uh, the next step is to look at direction and location. This is a big part of Clinkit, is like where things are at. And we're and this is fun stuff to talk about with other with island people like Hawaiians, because when they use sense of direction to talk about things, uh, they talk about going up, up towards the mountain or down towards the water. Because they live on islands, right? That's that's really that's what you got. And then from there, like when we would drive and they teach us, they were teaching us Hawaiian, the way that they would give driving directions is they'd say mountainside, you know, go inland, go to the ocean, go towards that town, go towards that town. That covered everything. You know, so north, south, east, west doesn't matter. And so these are interesting sort of things. And in Clinkit, it's the same way. You've, you can sort of, you go that way, this way, you know, and usually you would say towards an area that everybody knows. So for example, from where we're at, here in Ak, we could go Ik, Dak, and then uh, you could probably go towards maybe Chilkut, and then you could go maybe south towards Daku. And so those are some things you would have, but you know, going long time, it would be interesting to just go back with some, just talk to some of the older people and see how they would do that, how they would give directions a long time ago when everybody spoke Clinkin. But so what we're going to do is look at how these sort of things work. So we did a little bit of this when you were talking about the we thing. We've got ya, we, and you. Oh, I got, I got an example, actually. Let me throw my, let me throw my space crab on here. I had one with all of them. Mm. No, there it is. So we learned how this one works, right? So this is all relative to the speaker, right? So it's it's here, it's so ya yeah would be right here. Uh, we would be over there. He would be usually a little closer to me than you, and then you 
it would be way over there, like over yonder. So this is, you know, we kind of, we, we grasp this thing and this is where you get ya do, we do, he do, you do. You get ya, you know, and so you can use these to show like where something's at. The one that's used most commonly is ya and we. And we is usually that one we're talking about. Ya is either like this one right here as opposed to that one. Like if if we all had if we all had crafts, I guess. So I would say ya tsao for this one that I'm holding, right? Or, you know, you if it's way over there. So sometimes it's to distinguish which one we're particularly talking about. In the Raven stories, you'll you'll see ya used a lot. Ya yeish, right? And that's usually like the raven, right? Is how you might translate that. And that's when it's the capital Y kind of raven. So when we think about how this stuff works in Clinkent, you've got direction and location, right? And so where's it at? What's it doing there? Or where is it going? Those are usually two big questions. And these these determine a lot of things in Clinkit. Uh, so there's three different sort of senses of space. One is the one relative to the speaker. That's that crab one. We've done that one. Ya, we, you, he. It all depends on, it's all relative to me as the speaker. Some of it could be us, like ha is around us. So this is where you, why you say ha gu, come over to this area. Ha de, ha he, right? Yake ha di gu di. Those, those are all ones that are taking that same ha, which is different than our. It's a directional thing, and it means this area kind of around us. Right? But those are the same things. They just determine where things are in relation to whoever is speaking. The second one is how two objects relate to each other. So in English, we'd call these prepositions, right? On the table, under the table, around the table, behind the table, all of those. There's a whole big list of them. They all exist in Clinkit. Some of them work a little different. Uh, but then the other thing is they come after the noun instead of before. So we would, instead of on the table, we say table on, right? Nadak ka, nadak tayi, nadak take. And so we're going to learn a whole bunch of those. And then you'll learn just sort of how to use them, right? And these are, these are important. They're kind of just like another, it's like another chapter of knowledge in your brain, but they're important. The third one is relation to fixed points in the universe. The center of the clinky universe is the beach of the ocean, right? A lake doesn't matter. It's all about the ocean, right? And so we'll look at some things. But basically, you go from here to the ocean, from the ocean out to sea, from the sea to the shore, from the shore up to the inland, right? Those are, those are three. Those are some really big fundamental concepts in Clinket. They're built totally into the grammar, the inland, the shore, the water. And it's all about the ocean. And so uh, a lot of island people who can speak their language or who understand like traditional navigation, like if you drop them somewhere, they just want to see the ocean. Then once they say, okay, there's the ocean, I'm good. I know, I know where, you know, I feel pretty good now. And so these are, these are, there's other ones too, like up above and down below. And those ones are based off of that. So as we sort of continue our journey in Clinkit, that's one of the big things. The other big thing is that Clinkit is what we call polysynthetic, which means there's a whole bunch of little things that can smash together. That's going to happen a lot. All those little things have either meaning or function. right? If they have function, it's really just a grammar thing but otherwise they have meaning. So we're going to have these lists of things to start learning, but they repeat themselves. If you know finger, then it pops up in a verb, and you know that it, you'll be able to spot it. Sha pops up in a verb, you'll be able to spot it. And then you'll see when we get, you know, we did a little bit with body parts, but then body parts have body parts, right? So this is, everybody say, Aksha. Aksha. Achik. Achik. Achiksha. 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 
اخ 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 so things you know things have heads right and so these are this is the way that clinket works and you'll see it in the way that the place names work the way that the land works is that things can just sort of stack together like that uh, the other thing is like always classifying. We've talked about that too. What type of object is it? Is it a living thing? Is it a non-living thing? And then if you're carrying things, there's a whole bunch of categories. Right? Is it a stick-like thing that you carry with two hands or one that you carry with one hand? Right? But those ones, they all come down to like, how are you going to carry that thing? Right? That's the logic behind that. But the other classification is also like, you know, a type of verb, a type of motion. So clink, it's always just, it's like there's a whole bunch of Bentwood boxes, you know, and you're like, ah, oh, where does the spoon go? <laughs> so, and then you have pronouns built into verbs. Those are things we got to kind of get used to, but we're, we're getting better at sort of spotting them and, and using them. And then verbs conjugate for event instead of time. Those, those are the big things, and built into here is all the stuff that gets packed into a verb. There's a bunch of stuff you got to remember. Okay, let's just start with this. Everybody say, Nadak. Nadak 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 Okay. Okay, so we got these two things. Now we're gonna look at the relationship between these two things. Nadak shukat we kanatsak. Nadak shukat we kanatsak. Nadak shukat we kanatsak. Nadak shukat we kanatsak. How would we translate that? The squirrels in front of the table. So, what part is table? Nadak. What part is squirrel? So, what's the shukat part? In front of, right? And so. Uh, this is actually two things. So a lot of these things they like to take on, some of them they like to have a suffix on them. Right? They like to have a suffix on them. So this one has a suffix on there. So shuka is the, the base form of it. And then it takes the T on there just to sort of say it's, it's at that. Right? Because some of them they just feel a little bit empty if you don't put a suffix on there. And the T is a, it's a really good, and you'll see it pop up on a whole bunch of things. And we'll talk about these different suffixes and how they how they work. Nadak take we kanatak. Nadak take we kanatak. Nadak take we kanatak. Behind, right? So he's behind the table, right? So this is behind. And there's a whole bunch of things like uh, a day and stuff to like to go behind. And so ek kind of has a bit of a suffix on there as well. Sometimes you'll, the k won't be there. Sometimes it will be there. Nadauk kat we kanatak. Nadauk kat we kanatak. And yes, I'll, I'll put these slides up tonight so you guys have them. Uh, so, what is the cut part? On the yeah, so it's on. It's on the table. And again, we have a, the T suffix on there. The T really means to arrive, right? It has arrived there. That's just all, that's all you're saying, right? And you'll see it like, hot, you, get, you, get, you came here. You arrived. That T part has to do with arriving a lot of times. And what it's really just saying is like, and it works pretty well for the squirrel, although the squirrel's probably not going to just stay there, unless there's like a box of cookies. I don't know. tayi we kanatsak. tayi we kanatsak. tayi we kanatsak. 
Okay. So the tai underneath, right? Not there's a yi, but that's kind of below, like downhill from it. Tai is underneath something. Nadok dot hun we kanal tsak. Nadok dot hun we kanal tsak. So what are the we got two new things here? What are dot and hun? So there's another one where he's walking, and I know there's dotted lines, and maybe that's not the best way to have it, but uh, he's just standing. So hun would be for someone to stand. Hun is standing. And so the dot, whenever you have the dot one, uh, especially in these contexts, like where is something, it, it just kind of, it just wants there to be a verb, right? And, and so, because it could be on the table, but if it's around the table, it probably just, it sounds a little better having a verb. And so another example, another verb that you could use there would be yeyati. So you could say nadak dot yeyati. We cannot talk. It's somewhere around this, around the table. Nadak de ya nagut we cannot talk. Nadak de ya nagut we cannot talk. Translate that. He's walking towards the table. So the day part is a suffix for towards. Yanagut is walking, and then we have the squirrel, right? So he's, this is what he's doing. He's walking, or she, whatever. Nadaktach Yanagut we cannot talk. Nadaktach Yanagut we cannot talk. So now we have Nadaktach, right? So away from the table, right? So how would we say? The squirrel is walking to the house. Oh. Oops. Ah. Yeah, so the day, right? Yep. Hit day in the good we cannot talk. How would you say the moose is walking away from the house? Yeah, good way. Oh, 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 sorry. Yep. Okay, you, could, you could say, okay, how would, how would we say the cat is walking away from the dog? Kate dach a good way douche. Right, so, and, and so we have, we're showing this relationship between these two nouns. We have this motion verb, yanagut, is to, to walk. Walking right now, right? So there's a whole bunch of stuff that we can use with this yanagut. What changes is what's before it, and then what's after is kind of specifying, you know, that it, it is the squirrel, right? And so there's a whole bunch of different things and ways we could look at this, but we'll start kind of small. Nadaok dach yanagut we cannot talk. Oops. Nadak dach ya nagut we kanal tsak. Okay, so he's going around, just walking around the table, right? And so here's, so when we get to suffixes, we had the t, which is to be at somewhere. We had the day, which is towards. We have the dach, which is away from. Now we get the ch, and the ch has two general sort of interpretations. One is it's moving around. Right? So like that's that's how the squirrel would usually be on the table. Like kuh, it'd just be all over the place. Or it's repeatedly coming there. Right? So this would be like going around and round and round. 
That's how you would take care of that. Or you could, could you say something like the bear walked around the lake? Yeah, the uh, although the lake would be a little different okay. because the lake, you don't really go dot to run the lake. You go ayach, which would be you follow the, the shore of it. So you say, the brown bear is walking around the lake. Yeah, you know, it's just, it's just more categories. But it's a body of water. Cause, but if you think about Tlingit people, like, that's important. Because if you're going down to the water, that's different than going around like a building. or there, There's just, it, it's just in the, in the mentality of the Tlingit people, like, it's, it's important that you're going by the water. Because something's probably going to steal you. <laughs> <laughs> okay. You're gonna lift up the surface and go under. Yeah, maybe you're gonna walk under, go steal some bait. Uh, okay, so we got bases and suffixes. So here's another sort of thing to add to your linguistic vocabulary. Uh, so when we say a base, all that means is it's it's its own word. It's just a word that could sit by itself. That's all that base means. When we call it a base, because it's not really a noun, it's just talking about like some kind of location. So it, it, it's kind of a noun, dock. That means the interior. Dock, that means out to sea. Eek, that means down, you know, but it has more to do with a location. But especially dock and dock, you're going to see them built into verbs too, right? And so this, this is stuff that just, thinking about how these things relate. Because you could say, dak wukuch, and that means they went in a boat and they went away from the shore. But if, uh, let, let's say spiritually, you see your ancestors through the trees, you could say, they, they emerged from the forest. Or like a deer walks out from the woods. It walked from the shadows out into the open. It's the same word, but it has these multiple interpretations. But we call it an independent base when it doesn't need anything to belong to. They, they don't need any kind of possessive noun or pronoun before it. But they can also take a suffix. So you could say, he went, he went inland. They went there. He came from the interior, and he's coming towards the ocean, is what we would presume. Why do they have to get, get use two words that sound so similar? I don't know. <laughs> it's like if you have a hard time with that underlying K, then you're always just out to sea. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Okay, so then there's a relational base, and that it's, follows the same rules, but now it needs to have a possessing noun. So if it's around, it's just like in English, you can't say on, right? You'd be like, hey, have you seen my bracelet? Yeah, it's on. <laughs> on the bed, right? On the table. On. So the same thing. It, for these ones, they need to have a possessing noun. And they can also take on a suffix. And you'll see in certain, in certain verbs, sometimes, like you could say, It snowed on me. It has dawned on us. Right? And so sometimes these things happen to us. Right? And so that's the second category. And these ones, we'll see a list of them. Uh, there's a whole, there's big lists of them, but we're going to focus on some of the more common ones. And then there's a relational noun, which means it needs a possessor, but it cannot take a suffix. And so we just sort of mark these things. Um, just that way, you know whether or not it, it can have a suffix. Right? And, and so what are the what the suffixes do, and and what these do. Um, so suffix, they usually say, like, not just what's it, where is it, but kind of what's it doing there. It's residing there. It arrived there. Uh, it's repeatedly going there. 
Those are the sort of basic things. And so we've already seen a few of these, right? With the T and the Dach and the D and then the Ch. And then the other one that we've seen is U. So you could say Ne Shehu, he or she's at home, right? And so those Gusu, that's that same type of suffix right there. And then for a suffix, there's two types when we put them on. There's open, so it ends with a vowel. So if it's open, it will always be the opposite of the tone before it. Hit day. Uh, where else could we go? Hit day. Nech day. Right? So that's, it's just going to be the opposite tone. If it's closed, it's going to be short and high. Dach, nach. There's not a whole lot of them. But, you know, so that's a sort of, that's how they generally handle tone. Right? Because as we saw with possession, suffixes affect tone. Any questions? Can we practice some of those? Yeah. Because I don't, I'm not totally 100% like. Okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so first, let's just look at some nouns, right? So here's a bunch of nouns. These nouns talk about just what you're seeing in this poster. So for example, let's see if I got a pointer. Yeah. So here's the sky. Everybody say hot. 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 That's also a color for a bright blue. That's the sky. That's the whole big sky. Goose. 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 It's a cloud. Kate Kate Letty. Kate Letty. Kate Letty. Kate Letty. Oh. Okay. Yeah, Kate. Tonight I was trying to send a message and he's hit every symbol on his keyboard, so I'll just read it. Okay, Kakan. 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 It's a sun. Oskatu. 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 That's the forest, right? You can, there's also Askwani, that's the, that's the ceremonial sort of term for the tree people. But askatu, you're going to see used a lot to refer to things. You see a bunch of things that are called askatu yik something. So yik is another one that we sort of talked about, um, but we're going to see uh, more. And yik means inside some shallow container. Now uh, let's see. Oh, here's a birch. At dai. At dai. And this is niche. Niche. Nietzsche, Tan, Tan, Each, Each, Kakan Khusi, Kakan Khusi. So that's an example of a compound noun. So sun, foot, below, right? below the foot of the sun. That's a sun ray, Shaw. Yai, Yak, H, Sao, Khahat. That's actually Khawush, because there's no door. Whatever. Te, Hit, Gan Khahati, Gan Ka, Khat, Heen. So we've learned nouns, right? So nouns is learning the names of things. And we've got to keep doing that. We've got to keep finding, just keep building your inventory of things that you know the name of. And you've got to get really curious. you got to, as you see something, you got to say, oh, what's the name of that? Hey, what's the name of that? And then try to use it. Right? You've got to try to use it. So if you want to have, really have Clinkit in your life, you'll just start substituting these things. And it's not like for everybody. It's not like you say, I'll never say anything but kaya kajit again. 
But you do have to use it on a regular basis, whether you're talking to yourself, talking to another learner, talking to your animals or whatever. So now we get a set that's using the same picture, but that's talking about these sort of locations, right? Where are these things located? So sort of where are they located? And then the suffixes kind of take, of, take care of like, what are they doing there? Or, or are they going to, from, are they residing? Are they at rest? Those types of questions. So to go, as the bird goes up, kinde. 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 And so there's this, there's a whole bunch of these related ones. So generally way up above is de key. De key. De key. De key. And then you can also have upwards, which is K. 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 Right? Like you'll see, you'll see this in some of the verbs as well. Right, just upwards. Whereas downwards is yinde. 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 So everybody hands up, kinde. Hands down, yinde. Kinde. Yinde. So these are those are some basic sort of things. Is that ye oops ye and k and ye and kinde and yinde and de ki de ye right would there ever be a, you know words that well if how would you say kinde if it was if it ended with d e i oh it i that's probably how i'm saying it so the the general rule with a lot of things that end with a vowel almost all of them could be long or short so okay. kinde kinde so kinde kinde okay I probably say them long all the okay, time. Which is fine. I just right. was confused. The standard is to write them all short, but it's totally variable for a lot of those vowel endings, probably almost all of them. That's a good question. Uh, except for like na ki, you don't usually say na ki. So they're, they're, if it ends short, it can usually go either way. But if it ends long, it has to stay long. Uh, so. Uh, so we did up, down. Let's do uh, at the base of a tree. Eh. 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 And that could be the base of a hill. It could be uh, the the base of a person's spine. Those are all eh. To go upstream, na ki. Na ki. Na ki. Na ki. And that's where the clan name Nanya Ayi, that Na is in there to be sort of upriver. It could mean north as well, but it usually just generally means upstream. Downstream, Ich Ki. Ich Ki. Ich Ki. Ich Ki. And so you see, some of these have the, the dash on them. That means they need to have something there. Right, you can't just say ka. It has to be, you know, we'll say it, but it should be each ka, right? Each kat hun or each kat awe tan. The sea lion is on the reef or the rock. Ka. 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 So this guy who's in the forest, askatuyik. 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 So he has gone into the forest. And then this guy coming out, going towards the going towards the water. Ik. 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 Going to from away from the water to the inland. So these are opposites. Dark. 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 And then another uh is these guys are in their canoe and they're going dark. 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 
Dark. Dark. And this guy was, I guess, jumped down. He's going back. Yun. 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 So these ones are opposite. Dark. Dark. Yun. Yun. Dark. Dark. Yun. Yun. Dark. Dark. Yun. Yun. And then there's a couple, here's a couple other opposites. And so the, and then there's a few that are just, there's some that are just kind of interesting. Um, so to say Nietzsche, you'd usually want to be on Nietzsche, like he's on the beach. Ich is to go from the inland towards the beach. Dach is to go up to the inland. And it, and it doesn't, you don't have to be on the beach for that one. Like we could be in car cross and I could just say Dach, Dach, that means I'm going away from wherever the ocean is. We all know in our mind where that ocean is, so I'm going to keep going inland. Uh, but once you get way inland, you're probably going to start using places as directions, right? So I might say, I'm going to walk to Tesla. Uh, so the other one, and then we'll take our break, or I guess we'll do this one because, well, I guess we got a couple. Uh, well, let's do this one. So if you're in the house, so when we let's say we're in the house. For someone else to come in the house, that's neish, 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 neish. For out of the house, for someone to go into the house, that's ye, 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 ye. That's a pretty important distinction, right? Because you'd say neish that means come in to where I'm at. But you'd say, hit ye go, go into that house. It's a subtle difference, but you know, that one sometimes, you know, some of them, they, it depends on where you are. Uh, did we do that? It's, okay, so under the rock is tayi. Tayi. In the boat, in the car, uh, in the water sometimes is yik. 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 Going way out to sea is day key. Day key. Day key. And then going across a body of water to the other side is diya. 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 So then here's the last one. To be in a body of water, it starts with heen yik. So I'm going to say heen yik. Heen yik. Heen yik. And the way I think of it is if I lay down and I wouldn't submerge, that's heen yik. If I lay down and I would submerge, that's heen talk. Heen talk. Heen talk. Heen talk. Heen talk. So talk is the bottom of a cavity, like some container, right? And so heen talk, and that's where you get hin talk, hoodzi, and all these other types of names. Can we do the under the rock again? Because it has that, like, the rock is the thing, the dash, right? Yeah, so, so we can say tetayi. Tetayi, okay. right? So. How would you say the crab is under the rock? Tetayi we sao. And then if we wanted to say the dog is under the table. Anybody? The dog is under the table. Nadak tayi we cake, right? And so the the word order sometimes it's a little tricky because we're gonna uh, uh, say how are we gonna say table under the dog, right? <laughs> and so, but in English you're like wait table under the dog, but in Clinket that's how the word order goes, right? So for example, um, the the mouse is under my foot. Ach kus tayi we kutin. 
Right, and then uh, another question, does, does, does day ki relate to day ki na? Yes. So na is a clan or a nation or a tribe. Day ki na would be that tribe way out to sea. That's the name of, of Haida people in the Clinket language. So there's a really neat, really, oh, yeah, there we go. Oh, thank you. So if you're in the house and you're going to go outside, gone, 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 gone. 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 So that's going, right, to go outside once you're inside. And there's probably a relationship between gone and then uh, gun. So gun, low tone, short is a fire, but you only see it like when you're talking about around the fire, near the fire, all of them are going to use gun, G-A-N. Gun high tone is firewood. Oops, there goes Chewbacca. Um, and then gun is outside. All right, let's take a break. Seven minutes, eight minutes, then we'll come back. Ah, okay, Tana, I'll get to your question and when we come back in a few minutes. Short answers, yes. So let's see, we did have a question, and the question was, uh, yeah, we're going to do a few like kind of short sentences with like, where is it going and where is it located? So we can keep drilling some of these and then we'll think of, um, we'll do some other sort of stuff like that. But I want to go back for a second, just sort of as we kind of come back. Uh, one is answer one of the questions that was out there. So uh, there was a question about the, uh, just sort of a general question about a classifier. So let me pull up the classifier thing real quick. Um, so the question was, so if we look at our sort of, oops, if we look at our classifiers, the question was, is this zero group the most common one? And the answer is yes. If, you know, I did this uh, spreadsheet of all the documented clinket verbs at the time, uh, and then except for the verb dictionary. I didn't like pull all of them, but I pulled all the ones that Carrie was working on and a bunch of others. And then I just sort of organized them by classifier and then organized them by conjugation type just so we, I could sort of get an understanding of what these things were doing. And zero is by far the most common, by far. So it's kind of the default. And so the zero group, this zero, ya, da, and di, and then the second, the S and the L group, I think were pretty close. And then the SH group was the, it's very, it's very rare to have the SH group. So that was the question. So as we think about the classifier more and more, the default is the, the zero. That's usually what it will be. And then if you need to change the verb, talk about you know somebody's making somebody, the verb happen, then it usually changes to the S or the L. Okay, so I got this little uh, graphic up here so that we can sort of see, you know, possessive pronouns. So we can just kind of practice. And so let's, um, let's see. I wish I'll do one of these. So uh, I'll just ask you, Dasaya, and all you got to do is say what this thing is. And if you don't know, you say, just say, Hechasaku. And then I'll pick one of the, and then I'll just say, then you just possess it, so you can pick one of these. So ha, hastu, yi, i, ach, and du. So those are the sort of, we got uh, singular and plural, first, second, and third. Uh, and so we're not going to do like some things, whatever. Uh, but you could substitute other nouns, right? So once you know how to put the possessive form in there, you could say the dogs, whatever, or the, the brown bears, whatever, right? Uh, so we'll do, we'll do one of these. We each go around so that you all have a chance to talk. If you're online uh, and if you don't have a micro microphone, 
I don't care if you have a microwave. Um, you can just type it. Okay. So let's start with this. Dasaya. The picture. What's that a picture of? No, so it's a fort. I knew it was it. Well, you just said it in English, which is interesting. I knew it was a new. <laughs> if only you knew. Right, okay. That one works out perfect. Okay. So now, uh, let me copy, make sure I got that copy. New. Right. Everybody say new. 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 Give me a possessive form. Say it again. Hanu. 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 Dasaya. Yana eight. Okay, Yana eight. We say Yana eight. Yana eight. Possessive. Ach, yana edi. Okay. Uh, let's see. Yitro ha. You want to try it? Dasaya. Yeah. Yak. Yeah. Yak. So we're going to use one of these. Ach, ha, e. So to say, like, my boat. Ach, ya, gu. Ach, ya, gu. Ach, ya, gu. Ach, ya, gu. Ach, ya, Okay, make it somebody's, that's going to be somebody's bread. Has to suck nene. Yeah, we has to suck nene. That's those guys' bread. Okay. Eat for Cheech. Okay. Who's is it going to be? Ichiji. Okay, Ichiji. Okay. What a cool. Yeah, away. Yeah, away. Da. 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 Ach, da ye. So we gotta say it with conviction so we don't do the rising tone thing. Gow. I do. Are you so a Ach, da Ach, da wu. Yak a. Heen. Yehini, ye away, ye away. Let's see, my first online victim. Shana Kate, in Gayone. Dasaya. One more time, sorry. Jenwu. Yuk e ach ach Jenwu ye ach Jenwu ye. Yuk e yuk e. Yuk e. Ah. Everybody loved the Jenwu. That I brought down. 
That was, they just jammed on it. <laughs> it's really good. The saw, everyone was super nervous about saw glee. It was very good. Okay. Atla achji e itchoaha da saya. Oh, there you are. Okay. Yeah, away. Oh, Possess it. Ha ha kakini. Ha kakini. Yeah, away. Yeah, away. Yeah, Chu kan. Da saya. Okay, Kashtin Dasaya. Oh, there it is. Okay, sorry. Chukan. Yep. Uh, just gotta get the W on the end. Nusk. 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 And then we'll wait for you to type the possessed form. Ach Nusku. Ach Nusku. The last thing you'll ever own. <laughs> Oh, somebody's writing on here. All right. Is that somebody drawing? Okay, that's cool. Uh, let's see. Kashte ne it koaha da saya. I got the English term on there. Waiting. Kuch. Eat koha. Don't say ya. I can't look. It's called Ah. Sock. Sock. The possessive form. Ah, stop. Ah, sog. Ah. Ach So we just gotta remember that K changes to a G. Yep, and it goes high at the end. Yuck A. Ah, uh, let's see. Shakhtu u. Dasaya. Yeah, we. Possess it. Yeah, where well, has to show ye can cheese. Ah, Natalie, eat koha da saya. Hut kasha can cheese. Hut kasha eat koha. Yes, a kuke da saway. Tia. 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 Possessed, possessed form. Tia. Okay. So, but this one is going to stay, everything's going to stay short and low. Ach, Tia. Ach, Tia. Okay. When it has, because this this is actually ending with a pronoun, and that pronoun gets squished. It's it's just a, one of these weird things. It's in the book of exceptions. That was so funny to me. Sorry. From the book of exceptions, chapter seventeen. Okay. Shken. Is it wasu? Yeah, away. Wasus. And the possessed form? Achwasusi. Achwasusi. So here's something we're all going to practice. If we say something and we're really uncertain, 
All we got to do is just say it with conviction and at the end and say, Guachie. 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 That is your get out of uncertainty card, right? <laughs> that way we don't have to go, you know, wasus, right? And, or, you know, that way we're just, fo we could focus on tone, give it a shot, and, and we'll just fix it if, if it needs any fixing. Okay. Oh, guashie means maybe. And then as G, there's three letters in the first word. G, W, high toned A, L. Guash. And then the second word, there's two letters. Y, high toned E. Yeah. Guashie. And that's a great answer to a whole bunch of things, right? <laughs> Are we going to have a test tomorrow? Watch, <laughs> yeah. Probably not tomorrow. Maybe. Maybe I'll just pop up wherever you're at. Just, ah, just possess <laughs> this. <laughs> okay, let's see. Tana eat koaha. Huchi ayi. Dasaya. And you can just type it if you need to. Ah, watch, he says. Yak with the no there's no W because you could have you could have yak yik yak which would be there's muscles in the boat. Right. So the possessed form I guess I gotta get a better one. You can't see those with the colorful background. Ach yag. So, ach ya ge. Ach ya ge. So, that'd be Y A A G high toned I. Yuk A, Johan. Goodness, cheesh. We'll keep doing those, you know, just. Okay. So, before we do some sentences, here's another sort of graphic with a whole bunch of stuff in it. Uh, but the stuff here, like these are visuals. And now that we're starting to understand really how these things work, uh, one is you can go in and start reading Clinkit and just start looking for these. See how they're being used. Listen to Clinkit, see if you hear them. You could start using them as well. So now we can start getting more complex with where things are at, what might be going on with them. And so these ones, almost all of these, so there's two types. Uh, that are primarily being shown here. There's ones that are relational, which have a long dash, like talk oh, is next to something. So there needs to be next. So if you can say a talk, ah, you can use always as a default, right? But you could say uh, do talk. It could be next to somebody, sure. Hit talk, right? And so the other thing we're going to learn is there's a whole bunch that sound the same, right? There's a bunch of them that sound the same. Uh, there's also sometimes varying sort of, just, you know, like ak is between two things. Ak is a ravine. But they're really similar things, like between the peaks of the mountain, maybe. Um, then the other one is if it's got the shorter, that means it's a suffix, right? So a suffix attaches directly to a, a word, whereas the other one is a base, so it is its own word. Okay? So let's start. Did you say hit talk meant um, next to? Yes. Okay. And so you have like talk, dane, tan comes from talk. Ach, talky. The one next to me is like my clan relative. So we'll see these used in a whole bunch of different ways. And so, and then, but this is how you just sort of talk about things, you know, towards, away from, around, under. And it's, it's important to learn how to do this stuff. And there, there is a whole bunch of them. And we're going to sort of, my general philosophy is to just throw a whole bunch, and then we just start doing some exercises to try and recall them. And there are some that are probably more used than others, and I'll try and point those out. So, two and the two different one is inside and one is yeah so 
One is inside and the other is the bottom of a container. And it's usually a water body. Like inside the lake, inside the whatever. And so it's usually a body of water. But it, it could be. Because usually, in, and it's in here just for like illustration. So even though this is an illustration, there's a couple things that are probably stretching it here. But I just wanted to put them in there because they're common. So I'll point those out as we see them. Because there's... The two that are on here that are probably good for the illustration, but as far as understanding how to use them, talk usually means in some sort of cavity, down in usually a body of water, right? And so this is down into that bottom of water, but it could be sort of in the bottom of something. But a lot of times if it's in this box way in there, you would just say ka. So it gets a little tricky too. Because ka is usually on, but as far as how these things usually work, and it's similar to like things are on TV in English, right? And that's always, if you think about them a whole bunch, then you're like, well, why is it on? How come it's not in? And we have the exact same thing with clinking. We're like, how would you say like it's on the TV? Would you say to? And they're like, yeah, that sounds good. And then we're like, okay, we'll say something, something's on TV. And they use ka. And we're like, okay, fine. You know? <laughs> and so some of them, you just understand there's a base logic there, but then there's flexibility. So what about the, like the bottom of a boat? It would usually be yik. But to say like, to go, oh, underneath the Under boat? Under the bottom. Ta yi. It would be ta yi. But the bottom of the boat, like the hull, the outside of the hull, and the water, and the Oh, the boat. so then you would get in, there's, they all have names. Okay. So then you would use like, you would you'd be using like a keel or a, you know, oh, okay. the gunwales or something. You know, you'd have the parts of the boat. Okay. But like in that Raven story, they said he came up and he saw the bottom of the boat. And they said, we yak ta yi. And then I think they said, he saw yak ta yi we yak satin. ya we hit kach yi. He saw that bottom of the boat like we see the roof right here. So that's how. OK. Uh, so let's start. Here's a box, right? So the boxes are sort of metaphor. The big box is a sort of central one. Uh, so to go towards the box, we did this one. Day. 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 Away from the box. Duh. 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 So let's say, how do we say box and clink it? Kook. So we're going to say, cook day. 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 Okay. And then we get, nach. 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 So nach is through. But it's also like along, like going along the ridges or just walking along some sort of path or something. And so this is one that has, you know, these, some of these have multiple interpretations. And then you can also start to, so nach we see is a suffix, tu is a base. So tu, everybody say tu. 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 <laughs> it's inside usually a closed container. But you can go to nach. You could go to day. And you go to dach. Right? So what would the difference of these be? So if I say a to nach. Let's say let's say wugut, so walked. A to nach wugut. Yeah, he or she walked through, walked right through it, whatever it was. Like, yeah, the tunnel. Let's say it's a tunnel. Yeah, tunnel would be great. A two day will good. Yes, he walked into, walked towards the inside, but yeah, just walked into. A two dach will good. Say it. Away from, came out of the inside, right? Away from the, so it's, 
A tu dach would be out from inside. A tu day would be going inside. A tu nach would be just right through the inside, right? Okay. Do we, do we have, I'm sorry, do you have a list of some of these examples like written out with the English equivalent? <laughs> yeah, I think, there's, I, think there's some, I think there's a bunch in there. Okay. In the house in the Khatangi. So the, the thing to do would be to check out the chapter on location and direction but before Thursday. We'll come back and we'll keep looking at these and we'll come up with what I think you guys should do because to keep them, if these things stay abstract, they just they float out there and they, they get a little lost. So I want you to try writing 10 sentences that use 10 different combinations. They don't, the sentences themselves don't have to be mind-blowing complex. But I want you to push yourself to use as many of these different combinations as you can. So they all shouldn't be dach, dach, de, de, dach. Try different ones. Right? How would you use these in a sentence? Okay, so that's going to be, then when we come back on Thursday, we'll all share each other's sentences. And so try not, just keep the verbs pretty straightforward. Don't try to get all super crazy with the verbs. Like, there is no way I can go through it. You, you can say it. Right? <laughs> you could, but I wouldn't recommend it. Okay, so there's your, that's your mission. Should you choose to You have no choice. <laughs> okay. Sorry. <laughs> choice is gone. <laughs> but here's, so here's a couple others that we've already seen. So yin would be sort of downwards. Usually you say yin day. Kinde, yinde, kinde, right? So, de ki, de yi, so those are above and below. And they've been, they're used in sort of uh, Christian kind of ways in Clinket these days. So they'll say, de ki and kawu, de yi and kawu. Those aren't things from a long time ago, but they're used now. Uh, da is around. Da. Da. da, da, so you can go da day, you go da, you go da da, from around, from around it, to around it, just sort of going around it. Uh, another one that you'll see quite a bit is the surface of it, like here the wall, a person's face, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. So this ya yeah is like a face. Same it's the same thing. Ta uh, ya yeah. board face is the wall. Ta uh, ka board on is the floor. Ka and ya. Yeah. These are very fundamental concepts in Clinket. Ya yeah and ka. They're built into a whole bunch of ver those are probably the two most popular thematic uh, prefixes. So th some of these pop up in verbs. Ya yeah and tu pop up in verbs all the time, right? Kheh is another one, like a, a mouth, right? So this is where you get kheinach, kheidach, kheide. Those have three different meanings. So kheh is a mouth or an opening. So you could say klinket, kheinach, through the mouth of a klinket. You could say, uh, I heard it from his mouth. Right? For example, if someone say, how do you say this? And you had a way to say something. Oh, where, where did you hear that? Or I could say, <laughs> From my big uncle, Johnny Marks, I got the name Duani Kaudanuk. Or you could say, Duchaydach. Or, Achtuasugoyat Ayayi Achi. This is from the mouth of George Davis. Just put love and kindness in your heart. And at Kuich, they'll say somebody's name in Chede, to their mouth. Right? These are such important concepts in Clinket. And they're, they're right here. You know, and so just sort of looking at, that's another way to think about these things is the cultural realities of these parts of language. Uh, another one, 
Uh, so te or take is uh, behind something, and it's also a verb root to uh, to find something, right? Khote, I found it because maybe it was behind something. Right? Ka is on, and we'll see that one. And so there's a there's a whole bunch of ways that these work too, and they, and they work. So you can say kanach to go over something, or to go along something. You can say kadach from the top of it, kade going to be on top of it. Yik, yik is a shallow container, open to the world. You yik in a forest. You yik in the road. You yik when you yik in the water. That's you're usually in a boat. A lot of times, if you're in a boat, you're always going to be hin yik. You yik into a boat. You yik the boat yiks into the river. Yik into yik into yik. Ah. No, it just flows into it. <laughs> so between two things is ak, 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 and everybody has a tuk ak, right? <laughs> Use your imagination. Ak is next to something. <laughs> we all know how to say it. They're going to say it all in English anyway someday. Okay, so that's that's the sort of set. And there's, there's more than this, right? There's more in, on both sides. There's more of all of them. But this is, I think, a good base. Like, these are the ones that, as I was sort of thinking of how to start teaching these concepts and based off of intermediate clinket that uh, Richard and Nora Downhauer made, was just sort of saying, well, we got to start with the most common ones, right? And so these, I think, are some of the more common ones. One that's not on here is a word. It's a, it's a relational noun, so it should be its own word, and you can't add a suffix to it. And it's nak, 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 So dach and nak are a little bit different, right? So dach would be like, I came from over here. But nak would be, I left it behind. So that one has really big cultural, conceptual things as well. Because you could say, good. They went away from us. And if you said that, people would just assume that they died. Or you could say, I'm not going to abandon you. I'm not going to leave you behind. That's words of encouragement when people would say stuff like that. Tell me how you would spell. Nak. Well, well, no, the K was right, but it should be just a high tone, short A. Nak. 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 Underlying K. It's high tone A. But this one too. Chan. Chan is another one. Yes. So you know some of these already, because you could chen would be underline x high tone a n right to be next to usually a person. So you could say achla uh, I'm gonna go be by my mother. I'm gonna go see my mother. I was visiting with my paternal uncle. Chandach chande chant yake. It's good you came to see me. So these are all things that can certainly be used, right? They are so usable, and it seems like a lot when there's a whole bunch of them and all these arrows and stuff going all over the place. But they're very useful. So we'll do stuff. We'll practice again with the squirrel. You guys will write your 15 sentences. No, your 10 sentences. <laughs> so good at making myself laugh. Uh, you'll write your 10 sentences, just trying to use different combinations. If you, if you need these, I'm gonna, I'll put the slides up, but they're also in that chapter, locations and directions in How Sene Chayu Chetangi. What's that? Yeah, so Thursday. So you get two days to write 10 sentences. If the verb is the same in all of them, I don't really care, but I don't want these to be the same. So if you're going to say, walked inland, walked you know, whatever. If it's walk, 
I wouldn't want ten of them, but maybe like a f five of them. I don't care. Uh, try to push yourself a little bit. Uh, don't push yourself too hard. Like it, it shouldn't be something like you're trying to be too philosophical. But they're just straightforward. Like whenever you're learning a language, it's always trying simple, right? That was that's what we were learning last week. That was one of Steve Jobs' big things. Was like try and keep it simple. That's that's like sometimes the hardest thing to do. So you don't need to translate uh, a sonnet by Shakespeare that has some good location and direction concepts in it. Just write 10 easy little sentences. And then, um, yeah, any last minute questions? Everybody OK? All right. So 10 sentences. Yes, yeah, so 10 sentences by Thursday using these directional sort of terms. So the suffixes, these bases. And, and we'll just sort of, we'll just listen to them. And then we'll look at this stuff a little bit more. We'll look at some examples. We'll send this squirrel all over the place. Maybe we'll send something else somewhere. And then I'll just sort of, I'll come up with a list of things that, in English that I'll have you translate in class. Right? So we'll just do some exercises like that. Yeah, I'll put the slideshow up tonight. Okay, good to see you, Han. Good job.